The more PowerShell code we wrote, the more functions, scripts we have lying around. And at some point it becomes annoying to actually manage all of these things, especially when we might have multiple scripts working on the similar things or like a common domain. And that's where PowerShell module and module manifest comes into action. So let's have a look. Hello everyone, coming here with another PowerShell video, which I've been recording for some time now. So yes, as mentioned, PowerShell modules is a way to bundle multiple scripts together when they all manage a one common thing. Like for example, I have Active Directory module, which manages Active Directory. I have a bunch of Azure modules and each of them manages specific things like VMs or storage. But modules gives you much more than just bundling things together because effectively you could create a script with multiple functions in it and that will kind of do the same thing. With module we have things like for example, well obviously you can offer them, so that's for one, but we can version them. So you know obviously we fix something, we bring up newer version, we add new functionality, we add new version. We can also bundle other scripts with it or even other DLLs with it, so other C sharp libraries with it. We can also say that we require a certain version of module of, of PowerShell or specific modules actually, you know, that this module depends on other modules. So for example, when you're wrapping that set Active Directory module in our own needs, then we can just say that my module requires Active Directory module. And when you try to load it, it will complain unless actually you have this one. So let's have a look how we can come around this. Okay, so for the purpose of today's video, I've prepared three simple files, very simple implementation in each function. They all will just go to some API and ask for data. And that's it. The purpose of to show you how to build a module out of functions you have already, other than, you know, getting into implementation. So let's load my three functions. One, two, three. It's already getting annoyed. I need to do it one by one. And then yeah, let's just make a point. I can call them so this one works and I know let's say this one get what? Certainly they do work. But what if I want them all together, yeah? Because obviously at this point I could do a couple of things. One will be to create so-called wrapper script that will go and then dot source my script. So that'll be one. That will be two and that will be three. Yeah. And the effect of this will be exactly the same like what I've just done. So that pretty much says grab this file and then dot at this point says load it to the memory. So this is equivalent, but again, I need to create another file to load my free files. Not ideal, isn't it? So what I can do instead, I could, for example, grab all of them into my module. Okay. So let's just call it my staff.ps1 and for now I will just literally copy and paste them. One, two and three. Okay, so I have my three functions and now pretty much if I run them I will again get same same method because same result because they are all three functions. So I think to this point we actually yeah I just load a bunch of functions. So when I have it, how do I actually convert it into PowerShell module? I do this. PSM1. See? So that's the difference. I just add PSM1, which stands for PowerShell module. And at this point, we know this is PowerShell module, and that's kind of all about it. We have module. Actually loaded it because yeah, by default PowerShell modules don't get executed. By default, you need to do something like import module and then point it to the file. He obviously knows that PSM file is already there, so that will have the same effect. But why is the added value here? Well, there's not much value added yet because we now in at this point we just indicate this is PowerShell module, but we don't really tell PowerShell what to do with this module. So we just load my functions like it normally do. What we need now, we need a module manifest. So what we do, we go new module manifest, and I'm going to give it a path, so it'll be my staff.psd1, for example. Yeah, we need to give it psd1. 
because it's PowerShell data file and this is what PowerShell use for its configuration. So then we go and then pretty much it's like a bit template because you could literally have one PSD one file and then copy this across and as long as you randomize the the GUID that it comes with it will then just work. But pretty much what we have here let's just look at some values at the first yeah. First of all is root module and that tells actually what to load when you load this module. So our rule will be pointing into my stuff.ps um, one file. Yeah, that's pretty much the common way. Module version, this is obviously the very first one. And when we get to the point of grab grabbing this for the DevOps pipelines or GitHub actions, we actually automate versioning it. But we can, I don't know, let's put something that this is version 1.3. I don't know, 34. Yeah, just to show you that this will come up. At least we have version, actually, a method to version our code. Uh, compatible PS edition specifies whether we work on the it is only PowerShell core, which is PowerShell 6 and newer, only PowerShell or desktop, which is up to version 5. If we don't specify this PowerShell, we assume it works on everything. And this is the GUID. And pretty much that's what uniquely identifies this module. So when you're publishing that module to, let's say, PowerShell Gallery or somewhere else, this must be unique. That's what says that this is this unique version. Yeah. So when you will be actually later on copying PSD one files across, then pretty much always randomize this. Yeah. You literally just go new GUID and PowerShell generates you some random GUID. Overwrite it. Done. Alpha. So it picks the username for the alpha. Company name. So we can actually specify which company did that. Then we have some copyrights. But what else we have? We have, for example, description. So for description, we can I see all I need to do is uncomment it. I just say, you know, this bundles together my important functions. Whatever, yeah, something to indicate actually what is it, what it does. So a person looking for modules can use it to find. PowerShell version, this is the minimal PowerShell version. So for example, if I want to limit myself to PowerShell version, I don't know, 5, I can just, or 5.1 5 Windows PowerShell, I can just do this one. Uh, word of caution, if you actually go and grab PS version table, ah, we on the on, on the call, if we go to here to PS version table, you will give me this, which is partial version, and this is actually Windows build, yeah? So at some point I made a mistake and actually I pasted this all, and it worked on everything apart from all the Windows 10 versions operating with Windows versions. So unless you really want to limit your Windows PowerShell version to specific OS, you can do it that way, pasting the whole thing, like a minimum. Otherwise, just give it first few versions. And as you can see, this is the edition we had before, and this is desktop, and call will be saying somewhere here, call, that this is call. So this is a new PowerShell. Okay, uh, we can require this to host name. So for example, we can specify we only want console or VS Code or stuff like that. Version, I think it's version, minimum version of .NET Framework. So if you want, again, PowerShell 5, Windows PowerShell was built on .NET Framework 4.5, if I remember correctly. So you can again limit by PowerShell version or maybe you load specific mo uh, DLLs that have specific version, same. This will be also related to the uh, .NET, I believe, process architecture, well, if we want to go, you know, only 64-bit, only 64-bit, then we can do that. I think I've used, honestly, 86-bit ones where snappings were still around, I might be wrong, but this is pretty much non-existent anymore. Like, uh, all everything has been 64-bit PowerShell. This one is really interesting, required modules. So that's where we can specify either by name, that I want, for example, a random module. Yeah, that's where we can pretty much specify the the modules we need, or we can even go a step further. We can specify specific module name equals I don't know az dot storage, and that we want module version of, for example, one dot zero dot zero. I don't know. I'm just imagining. Yeah, but pretty much. What happens here, at least usually when I develop something, I tend to pick the versions that I already have installed on my machine or on, on the production machine. So I can actually at least, you know, 
I can say that we need at least that version of module. Obviously I can add, as we can see, this is I, so I can add another lot of modules. So this property is really useful when we are actually wrapping all the modules or we just have dependencies. So I will put this in place and I just want to show you actually that it will complain because obviously I think that we are not that high with Azure modules. Uh, assemblies, it's DLS pretty much. So when we need certain load certain uh, DLS, we can do it. Other scripts to process. So pretty much what we can do, we can bundle this module with all the PS1 files that we run before the module is executed. For example, if you ever loaded VMware ESXi module for managing yeah, ESXi, it pretty much at the very first thing you when you load, it shows you, hey, this is, you know, a ESXi module from VMware and this is how you use it. That's how they pull it off. They use pretty much this. So with their code, they shipped another PS1 file that displays this. Uh, this one is PS1 for formatting of the files, and this is more advanced topic, although that's how we can do it. Nested modules. So when I am actually shipping more modules or scripts with this module, yeah, I bundle something together, I can nest it that way. And what PowerShell will do when it's loading the module, we go and automatically load for me these modules. Oh yeah, obviously I didn't mention required modules also load these modules. Yep, so before before it starts, it loads it, actually loads these required modules. So in other words, in my code, I don't need to even worry about things like import module, testing if module is there. If it's there, it loads it. If it's not there, it complains. It's not there and doesn't load. Uh, so same story, this. This option is very interesting, functions to export. So this is actually means which functions will be exported for the user. So which functions can be used by the end user. So in other words, let's pick, for example, mine. And what will do will happen now, PowerShell will load this module, but only this one function will be available to you as the user. So I can still reference this other functions in my code. So just for sake of it, let's do that quote here. But pretty much these functions will be hidden from the user. And I might wonder why actually I will want that. And you want that when you have your own, let's say, so-called helper functions. Actually, they help you to, I don't know, format things or pull data, but something that user don't, won't really use it. That's why you you have them as so-called private functions, yeah? So you don't export them. Or if you want to load all of them, you just put, put asterisk like I think was before. Oh, like in here. Yeah, you just put asterisk, it loads everything. Commandlets, so that's how we again load functions from DLLs, have variables, aliases. Uh, DSC, that's the list of modules that we ship. This is just for the data. And for the private data, we certainly need things like one tag and this one magic tag. And this comes when bit later when we build bundling things as the nugget packages is PS module. So that will indicate to PowerShell that this is PS module. Uh, well, with the license, UI icon, what we released, you know, in this version and etc. etc. And at the very bottom, have a very interesting one, default command prefix. So probably by now you are accustomed that PowerShell modules, when they are common, they all have like a prefix, they're like get ad user, set ad user, and etc. etc. So same thing we can do here. And I will, let's say, put my initials. So pretty much what, what does it do? In front of each of these functions, you will add kp. So in that case, get kp quote, yeah, get kp weather when it's exposed, when it's public, get kp cut fact. So that's how you can very easily add that prefix to each of your functions. Okay, so I think we can try to load this now and let's just see how it complains about that dependency I put. So we can either do import module or we can do IPMO, which is an alias for this. And then we tell it to my stuff PSD and we can force. Force means load, always reload it. If the function is already in the memory, you will not, and if you don't force it, you will not load that to memory. So in other words, especially when you're working on the module and you want your things, you know, you change something, you, you rebuild your module or whatever, you want to force it. Otherwise, it will not load it. So let's see. And here we can, and we can see as storage is not loaded. Yep. So that's the thing. If that, if it was available there, you will load it. It's not. Uh, let's see, I just put some lower version. I'm not sure if I have these modules at all on this machine. Ah, I must have it because it just loaded. And if I go get module, I should see this somewhere there. Dun, dun, dun. So you see, it loaded AZ storage for me. 
of this version, which is fine. It also loaded AZ account, so apparently, probably, if we will go open AZ storage module, we see that it has dependency on AZ storage. And there's also my stuff of this version, which I specified here. So this is literally it. Module manifest gives you a lot of power with a very little effort and takes away from you things like validating whether modules are there or not. Although versioning or things like keeping track of what's, which functions are public or not might be a bit, bit annoying. And for that, we we're gonna have another video. All right, so that's pretty much all about module manifest. Uh, if you want to dig, dig deeper, you can always open Microsoft documentation about it, but pretty much what I showed you is what I've been using most of the time. That's how you prepare your code to be shared with others, really. So on the next step, because all this work is a bit annoying when we do that, I will show you actually a framework and how to organize your code so that you can build it, I would say, following the conventions that exist in PowerShell community. As for now, bundle your scripts together, wrap them in the nice PowerShell module, share with the users, and hopefully that will be start like a, the, next, the next step in your tool making career. But for now, to the next time. See ya.